What is up, Wastelanders? Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. Today, I wanted to take a stab at some of the basics for the newer folks that are joining our rolling bloodstained hills of Appalachia. Leveling up may seem like a daunting task. It's actually much easier than it seems. It doesn't take any wild glitches or exploits either. Just spending your time in the right places and having a good idea of how experience is gained in the first place. Also, watch to the end for a bonus tip that is absolutely vital to the newcomer. This is something that's stunning my growth immensely and I wish I knew it from the start. As always, if you find this video helpful or entertaining, smash that like button and subscribe for more content. Let's get started. First off, don't be afraid to join events. In the past, enemies weren't scaled to your level, so events and mobs in Eastern Appalachia were much harder. Nowadays, there's nothing stopping you from contributing to events even at the lowest levels. Being a high level myself, I love seeing low levels joining the harder events, getting their boots dirty. It's a surefire way to level up fast. Only thing that keeps low levels from doing the harder events is the fear of losing their loot. You only lose your loot when you die outside of events. As long as you see the event at the top right of your screen as active, you will instantly respawn when you die and keep your loot until the end. Where it's best to find the closest stash or scrap box to store away your goods. Some events are way better than others. This may be obvious to some, but one of the top events is fighting the queen at the Scorched Earth event. She constantly spawns wave after wave of enemies with her shockwave call while she's on the ground. Using the Tormentor card and luck will give you a chance to cripple her wing while using a rifle, which will keep her pinned until she mutates at half health. At this point, you have to cripple her again. For shotguns, you can use the Enforcer card in agility. Heavy guns use the one gun army in luck to cripple limbs. People have claimed for the longest time that if there are people on top of fences or stacked tents, that she'll just keep flying around instead of landing. As long as you cripple her wing, she has no choice but to land. She spawns basically every mob in the game from crickets to mega sloths to that hermit crab bus thing. So the amount of loot, meat, and experience you get from this is endless. You can keep her on the ground and make the event last the entire half hour, maximizing your gains. And then there's Radiation Rumble. Radiation Rumble is amazing for non-stop waves of ghouls. Each ghoul gives you a huge amount of experience compared to any other mob in Fallout 76. There are tons of legendary mobs that spawn. Very rarely will you walk out of Radiation Rumble without five or more legendary items. They drop plenty of other meds, junk, and tons of other random loot to add to your stash. This is one of the absolute best events to grind for experience in my opinion. Another event that I absolutely cannot leave out would have to be fighting our buddy Earl over at Colossal Problem. Not so much him as fighting his Wendigos that he spawns when he howls. After you hear his mighty roar, Wendigos will drop from the ceiling ready to back him up. Don't be afraid to take these guys out. As a matter of fact, it's better to focus on the Wendigos instead of fighting Earl. Let others take down Earl while you farm his minions. They reward you with a ton of experience, just like the ghouls, but drop much better loot. Their teeth give you two acid each and they drop loose screws, both in which are very hard to come by. Before Bethesda released Colossal Problem, it was almost impossible to gather enough acid or screws to be comfortable, especially screws. Acid would come from a few other places like Campfire Tales or taking over the Hemlock Holes workshop, but screws were far and few between. They also drop whatever ammo you use against them. So if you are pumping Ultra Sight 45 into them, they give it right back, alongside with purified water, stem packs, all kinds of stuff. This is by far one of the best events to attend, especially for loot, so don't be shy. Next up is making sure you have the right cards and a good understanding of how leveling up works. The first thing which is the most obtainable in the beginning is grabbing the inspirational perk card which can be found in charisma. You'll gain a 15% bonus in experience while on a team which leads me to my next topic intelligence. Intelligence is the base special stat used to calculate how much experience you actually get. The more the better. When joining a casual team of four people you'll receive an additional four intelligence points so being in a team is a must. If you decide to go the bloody route for damage which I see no better way of playing, but that's just me. You get an additional three intelligence per unyielding piece, along with three additional points to all the other stats except endurance. If you guys are interested in a much more in-depth guide of how bloodied works, like running a bloodied commando or bloodied rifleman, check the link in the description below. But wait, don't go nowhere yet. It's time for this bonus tip that I promised. One of the most important things I wish I knew from the beginning, and it may be one of the most scariest things in the game, and that is, drum roll please, turning on your microphone, blowing the dust out of it, and meeting new people. But wait, 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 hear me out on this. 
This is so important. I'll tell you why. I know you might be thinking this is such an obvious one, but you'd be surprised how many people don't really communicate with anyone and they progress so much slower. There are too many reasons why this is important, but I'll just name a few. Adding some vault veterans to your circle can give you that edge that you've been needing this whole time. Most seasoned players have plenty of junk and items that they are just dying to give away to someone just starting out. Most of us were helped by high level players when we started and it's a service that is passed down as we level up. Someone helped us and in return, we help out someone else. This is one of the most amazing things about the Fallout community. No other game will you be greeted by some random high level person and be given guns and equipment that will have you set for the next 100 levels or so. It usually takes you to make that first step though. You may be lucky enough to run into that blue suitcase in front of White Spring Station full of plans, junk, and ammo, or have a high level stop by your base and unload a bunch of stuff, but meeting new people is a good way to get yourself a decent automatic rifle and a full set of deep pocketed armor, which helps you with carry weight. This equipment will give you a much easier start than to just face the wasteland all alone. It's hard to level up using only a pipe pistol or a 44 revolver and random weak armor pieces that are just thrown together to make a hodgepodge set of armor. Another reason to make friends is that you will have so many questions that you want answers to. And although Google and YouTube are very helpful in that sense, some seasoned players have their own spots for finding desirable goods. And we love spreading our knowledge of the game. Half of the end game of Fallout 76 is helping out newbies that are just starting out. So reach out, make some friends, and when you become a high level yourself, help out the fresh vault dwellers that pop out after you. That about wraps it up, guys. If you want to see other content I made, check out the links in the description below, or click here or here for some playlists. Click on the cool little circle on the screen if you want to subscribe for future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Roll the outro. So true. When I was down and down, a long case.